Anyway, hey guys, it's Joe. Um, this is uh, me coming to you from our brand new youth page. Um, it's going to be the first of many videos that's to come, so look out for more videos. Um, I know it seems a little bit weird and everything, but this is our personal page to so just make sure that we can share different ideas and share different things um, that we want to address as a whole, any question that needs to be addressed as a whole. So um, as you can see in the video title, it's How to Fast, What's Up With Fasting. Um, this was brought to my attention by one of our youth, Megan, shout out to Megan. Um, we brought it to my attention that um, a lot of you guys are like really confused about fasting and what it's all about. Uh, so I just wanted to clarify a little bit about it. So let's get into it. Um, one of the major things that I've been hearing from a bunch of people is that uh, what should I eat? Like um, what what are the specific foods? How much should I eat and etc. Um, the answer to that is on a Daniel fast, what you're really looking to do is eat fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. So what does that mean? Any kind of fruit, any kind of fresh fruit and vegetable is absolutely okay, whether it's um, sauteed. Um, you're just looking not to fry things. So if you have potatoes, you're not looking to make french fries. You're looking to make roasted potatoes, things that kind of minimize the amount of grease that you guys are using. You guys are also looking to use natural oils, not really corn oils, but more like olive oils and grapeseed oils and canola oils and things like that. So furthermore, with the grains, we're not eating Julie Blanc. We are not eating white rice, but we're looking to eat brown rice and yellow rice and things of that nature. And we want to make sure that in our breads, we're eating unleavened bread. So you want to eat pita breads. I know um, there's wheat bread out there, but that's leavened bread. Leavened bread means any bread that's risen a little bit. Um, anything that has yeast, pretty much, for the most part. So those are kind of the foods that you want to go for. There's a whole bunch of, you want to think it just with those three categories of food um but you can make a whole lot i'll be letting you guys know in the chat and by messages the different recipes that you guys can make with the food categories that you do have um besides that um as far as portions and everything like that you want to make sure that you're not stuffing yourself even if you can eat these things make sure that you're not stuffing yourself because it kind of it low-key defeats the purpose of you kind of you know, sacrificing and things like that. So you want to make sure that you're not stuffing yourself and you want to make sure um, that during that time you're drinking plenty, plenty, plenty of water. Usually the first and second day you're like really hungry and it's like, that's like the, 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 the go time days. Um, usually around the third day, that's when your breath starts to get a little funky and everything. That's just your body's natural reaction to the lack of food that you guys are taking in and all that different stuff. So you want to make sure that you have a balanced diet. Now, what I was going to say after that, some people do the Daniel fast without a protein, meaning without a meat. Um, the only one that you can consume is fish. So if you want to make any type of fish, you can. Just make sure that you're not frying the fish. Uh, so, yeah. That's just for the people who medically cannot go through without you know, eating a protein or anything like that. Anybody who's anemic, you want to make sure that you kind of throw some kind of protein in there. If you, if you, have, if, uh, you have a personal conviction and you want to make sure that you don't eat a protein like uh, any kind of meat so you want to go ahead and eat a lot of beans because beans have like a lot of proteins you want to stay kind of in the realm of broccolis and greens spinaches and things like that so moving on so that's with the food stuff and you want to make sure you stay away from sodas um and unnatural drinks and stuff like that now drink Water, okay, drink water. Water will get you through. If you wanna uh, put strawberries or berries or spinach in your water or your lettuce waters or, you know, there's a whole bunch of different recipes for that. You can make any kind of water. Just you wanna make sure to avoid as much sugar as possible, like fake sugar. Um, that's gonna be granulated sugar, processed sugar, and things like that. Um, yeah, so we're moving along. <clears throat> Second bullet point, do not beat yourself up. Listen, if you're doing the fast for the first time, you just might slip up and eat a piece of chicken. It's okay if you eat a piece of chicken. Uh, I mean, we want to make sure that we strive to, to be the best that we can be during the, during the fast and everything like that. Um, but as we go further down the list, you'll see that it's, it, food is about 5% of what the fast is actually about. 
So you want to make sure that you're not beating yourself up about it. You want to make the sacrifice, but it's not essentially about food. So if you do slip up in a day, don't say, I'm just going to throw away the day and I'm just going to eat what I want. Okay, yeah, I slipped up right now. Put the chicken away. Give it to somebody else. If that's your sacrifice, give it to somebody else. And, you know, continue back on with what you're doing. It might be 12 o'clock. You may have slipped up and eaten some eggs. Okay? You already ate it. You can't regurgitate it. So, I mean, just put that aside and then just continue on with the day. Pray. Um, it all depends on your personal convictions. Now, third bullet point. Talking about the spiritual aspects and the sacrificial aspects. Now, like I said before, fasting is like 5% of the entire fast. So, you don't want to make the entire fast about food. Food is, the reason why food was picked. Um, especially in the Daniel fast, is we as human beings have a tendency to rely on this, our flesh, a lot, and food fuels our flesh. It's not, food does not do anything for your spirit. Food does not do anything for your soul. It does everything for your body. So we're trying to kill the flesh. That doesn't only mean the bodily portion. We're going to talk about that um, in a little bit. But um, the reason why is that man does not live on bread alone. Okay, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Father. So um, what we're looking to do, essentially, is to give up food as being a general thing. It's a general thing that relates to everybody, so that's why food was picked. Um, in terms of personal sacrifice, whatever, wherever your heart is, there your treasure will be also. Okay? Um, that's a scripture. I forgot where the scripture's at. I'm not, like, the, the super Bible scholar, so, like, Google there, John. Praise God. All right. So, um... You want to make sure that it's a sacrifice for you. So if candy is a sacrifice for you, yo, make sure you stay away from candy. If social media is a sacrifice for you, if, if you're like really, really hooked on social media, like get off that, John. You want to make sure that you eliminate all distractions if possible. Um, if binge watching Netflix, I know that's a big thing for me. Binge watching Netflix is a big thing for you. Be like Put the remote control down. Go pick up your Bible somewhere and just like go meditate and just um, fill yourself up with God. The objective is to... Fill yourself up with of more of God and less of the things of the world, less of the things in the natural. So feed your spirit, less less uh, feeding going into the body. Um, so whatever your sacrifice is, may it be personal. Don't just make it food just because that's what the Daniel Fast says on a website. Make it yours. If it's video games, if it's um, Megan, shout out to Megan. Um, one of the things that she pointed out was, I mean, hair. For all the ladies out there, I mean, one of her pers personal convictions was hair. So, I mean, like, all the bundles, if you got to put the bundles aside, if you got to put the crochets aside and everything, if that's a personal sacrifice for you, staying away from your phone, just make sure that you're able to do those things. Um, moving on, prayer. Now, huge, huge, huge deal. Like I said before, food is like 5% of the fast. The rest of it, pretty much, is like covered in prayer. I don't know, I was say like 85%. Um, the rest of it is pretty much prayer making sure that you spend time in prayer to sacrifice with God. It's so, it's one of the hardest things to actually sit in the presence of God and just like sit with him. You ever been with somebody in a car that you don't really know like that? And it's kind of awkward because you don't know what to say. You shouldn't be in that position with God. You should think about it like that. God is your father. You're supposed to have a relationship with him. So taking that time out to kind of hear the voice of God. And mind you, God is a gentleman. He doesn't force himself down your throat. He doesn't, he doesn't force himself into your space or in your atmosphere. But what he does is he, he speaks really, really quietly. He speaks really, really calmly. So you have to kind of tune out everything else and make sure that your mind is like focused on him, like specifically. So if it's, um, and, and, um, if it's a specific time that you set up with God, like, yo, at 12 or 1, I'm going to meet up with God. Keep your appointment with God. If you can't pray for like three hours in a day, which, you know, most of us would like to do. If you can't do that, then if you decide to pray to God for 10 minutes, keep that 10-minute appointment. If you decided to pray at noon, pray exactly, pray at noon. Keep that appointment and make sure that you're consistent with it. Prayer is a huge, huge, huge part because that's what's going to edify your spirit. That's what's going to edify your soul. And along with prayer comes reading the scriptures because we don't just want to pray in the air. When you re, um, reiterate and regurgitate um, and just state what the word of God is saying, then those promises, because the Bible is a book of promises. So when you say the promises out in the air, they're just like waiting to happen, but they need you to activate it. So 
essentially what you want to do is you want to remind God of who he is. If you're Whether you're starting in praise, whether you're starting in worship, whether um, you're starting asking off for forgiveness or anything like that, you just want to make sure that you're throwing the word of God in there because that's what's going to give your, 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 um, your prayer strength and effectiveness. So make sure that you're definitely spending time in prayer. If you're fasting and you're just doing the food part of it and you're not really praying, you're not fasting. Straight up, like legitly, you're, you're dieting. You're, you're, you're really on a diet um, because prayer is the biggest part of it. Relationship. Next bullet point. Huge, huge, huge deal. Guys, God is our father. Like I said, I'm going to reiterate it 10,000 times, but God is our father. Like, how would you feel if you had a significant other, you know, and you never text them, you never call them, they never talked to you, y'all never went out, y'all never went out on dates or anything like that? This is not a relationship. A relationship is based upon communication. It's, re it's based upon spending time. So our main objective in our prayer is not like, Jesus, I want this. Jesus, I want that. Jesus, I want this. Jesus, I want that. It's really, really based upon, Lord, I just love you. I just want to commune with you. And then the rest of it, like, if you seek ye first the kingdom of God, all of his righteousness shall be added unto you. So if you spend time with God, like, he'll provide everything else on your path because he knows you and you know him. So relationship is going to be one of the, like, most key things for you. That's the very, very first thing. A lot of people go on fast because they're on, they're, they have a specific problem. They have a situation that they're going through. Um, and they're like, yo, God, I need this now. If you went up to a stranger and you said, stranger, like, Mr. E, like, yo, I need a thousand dollars. Mr. E is going to be like, who the heck are you? Like, who are you? Like, I don't know. Because you guys don't have a relationship. But if you go to your mother, your father, your best friend, your cousin, anybody in your church, and you said, I need this, then, you know, you kind of got, you guys get the gist of what I'm saying. Um, it'll be easier for you to, uh, for you to get what you're asking for because you have a relationship. Not that that's the main objective, to get things from God. Our essential thing is to want to be in God's presence. But the benefit of it is that God supplies all of your needs according to his riches and glory. And God is pretty rich. So going on to the next thing, fast when the Lord compels. Don't only fast like once a year just because we're doing the crusade. Don't fast because Minister Greg and Minister Andy tell you to. Fast when God puts it on your heart. That's obedience towards Christ. Um, obedience is greater than sacrifice. So you want to make sure that you're hearing the voice of God and that you're doing exactly what he wants you to do because he might be setting you up for the thing that you're praying for if you decide to be obedient to him. God says, um, if I trust you with a little thing then and, and you do well with it, I could trust you with a big thing. So be trusted with that little thing, okay, so he can trust you with the bigger things later on. Um, don't use God. Like I said before, you want to build a relationship. Don't only come to him when you need something. That's, that's abuse. That's, that's, that's mad shady and it's just like not right. That's, that's not what God is here for. God came down because he loved us. Moving on. Okay. Um, don't make your fasting public. Okay. It's really, really hard. Cause like Matthew will be asking you, like they, they offer you stuff and you might be on at, at your job. This is, yo, this always happens. Every time there's a fast, that's when there's all the good food in the refrigerator. That's when, that's when they want to invite you to mad parties. That's when they want to, that's when they want to buy you food. Like pay for your food at work. When the rest of the year they didn't do it. But exactly when you're fasting, that's when they want to buy cheesesteaks and, and fries. Like, yo, don't be a job. Like, yo, man. Oh yeah, that was, that was my point. My point is, don't make it public. Um, the Bible, the Bible was talking about um, how a lot of hypocrites will be in the temple, will be in the tabernacle, and they like to pray on the street corners so that, oh, my phone's dying. Um, they like to pray on the street corners because a lot of people started, like, looking at them and seeing, oh, my God, they're so spiritual because they pray out loud and they're doing all the spiritual stuff out loud. Mind you, those same people on their corners, God called them hypocrites, meaning that they were empty, meaning that you're praying for no reason. There's no point. You're just you're just building a bucket for no reason. You're just you're just wasting breath for no reason. What you want to make sure that you do is that you pray in secret. Think about it like this: you have like crowns in heaven. Like when you do something good down here, like you get crowns in heaven. Like I know I'm not talking like super spiritual. This this is just you know if, if you guys can understand what I'm saying, you get crowns in heaven. So let's say I gave somebody a dollar down here. I don't need to broadcast that I gave somebody a dollar. 
what's going to end up happening is God is going to bless me in another regard. It's not that you're doing it to be blessed, but God is going to bless you in another way. Um, God's going to bless you in heaven. God's going to make sure the provisions of heaven come down for you because you're walking in righteousness, because you're walking in servanthood like Jesus Christ did down here. So make sure, guys, that we're not broadcasting on fasting just to make sure, to, just to seem like you're super spiritual. There's no point. Because when a demon, I've been seeing manifest it in my show. So what can judge thinking that because you're doing backflips over the pew or, or you know, sliding on the ground that when you come and encounter a demon that you're going to be able to chase them out. Um, yeah, guys, get it together, okay? All right, so the next thing that we want to go into, um, this is a part of every fast. I don't care if you're praying for the sun to come down on earth. I don't care if you're praying to get a job. I don't care if you're praying for a chair to move by itself. I like It doesn't matter what it is. Sanctification and holiness are always going to be a part of every fast. Sanctification um, and holiness being set apart. Um, God typically doesn't, Especially when he's especially when he's working with you, he puts you to the side. A lot of the leaders that you see in the Bible, I mean Moses and Esther and Paul and Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, like there's always a pulling to the side so that God can work on them. God does not um when Jesus Christ was um down on this earth and talking to his disciples, he always made sure that he pulled them to the side. He made sure that he did like a kind of a huddle pretty much, you know, over dinner mostly. Uh, made sure that he spoke to them, make sure, making sure that they were edified, making sure that they were poured into, making sure that they were walking righteous and they were walking in purity. So that's always going to be a part of it. Now, the way I want to explain this to you guys is I want to remind you guys that we are tripartite beings. So I want, I want you guys to see what's being sanctified, okay? Pretty much in layman's terms, what's being worked on, what's being transformed, okay? So imagine over here I have the spirit, which is exactly who you are. So this is the spirit area. This is the soul, where I'm at, right here. And then this is the body, all right? So the spirit over here is already saved. This thing is perfect. I mean, shoot up to heaven, no spot, no blemish. We chilling right here. The soul, this is where you got an issue. And the biggest issue is in your body, because that's your flesh, you know. If, you, if you've been in church all your life, you know that the flesh is like the enemy of all things, of carnal, and all the different stuff. So back to the issue. Your spirit has all this power because the Holy Spirit is what's, breathed, is what's breathed inside of you. That's the thing that's like making the heart beat over here in the spirit. So this is who you are, right? Your soul is built up of your intellect, your will, and your emotions, okay? All the different stuff that can be conformed and transformed to make your personality and all that different stuff. And your body is over here waiting for the manifestation, of the spirit okay so that you guys can do all that crazy stuff that jesus was doing like raising people from the dead and stuff all right so when there's sanctification sanctification is allowing the holy spirit think of think of like a like a pipe okay your soul is a pipe and it's full of all this trash all of the social media stuff all of the things on tv all of the all of the things that your friends are telling all the cussing the drinking the smoking the fighting all the different stuff is is clogging your pipe pretty much what holiness is doing is unclogging the pipe so that the spirit can get through to manifest on the earth, which is in, in your body. Okay? So the more you're praying, the more you're filling yourself up with the word, the more the blood is being applied and it's just taking, taking all of that filth, all of that gunk out until you can see the glory of God, okay, which is inside your spirit, which is, you know, meshing with your spirit over here. And get through to your body so that you can do all of these marvelous wonders. I don't know if that made sense to anybody. So, you know, if you just comment below so, you know, I can give you guys a better example. But again, the spirit is over here. The soul is like a pipe and the body is right over here. So we want to make sure that during the sanctification process that we are asking God for a renewal of our minds. We're asking him to renew our emotions, to change our emotions, the way that we react to things. And, 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 and to change our will. To change what we're actually manifesting and doing through our actions. So that's a really, really big thing. That's a part of any fast because we want to see transformation. Um, Megan made a comment and she said, um, well, the first and second day were kind of hard. But then afterward, it got kind of easy. So I don't know like what that's supposed to be about. Guys, doing a fast doesn't mean that you guys need to be like dragging on the floor bleeding after a fast like God is not trying to rip you apart that's not the objective 
The objective is for if you had a problem, let's say you had a problem with addiction. When we get to that part in fasting with addiction, when you start praying with that, that's what's going to impact you the most. That's what's going to be the hardest for you. Forgiveness might, might not be your your Achilles heel pretty much it might not be your downfall because you might be a person who can just forgive praise God for you you might be a person who just doesn't have a problem with Thanksgiving you don't have a problem with persecution you don't have a problem with lust or lying or anything like that but addiction might be a problem maybe lying is your problem so whatever it is that's gonna be like your strong man that's gonna be like the, the thing that you're battling with um, so if it's getting easier for you throughout the day don't feel bad guys don't feel bad. God is not trying to destroy you. He's trying to build you up, okay? So you want to look for progress. If you're going through it and the 6 a.m. prayers were hard for you before, it's okay if they're getting easier. That's a good thing. That means that you're you're able to be in more communion. Your spirit wakes you up in the morning. You just find yourself waking up at 6, 6 a.m. in the morning. That's good. You're building up an endurance. You're building up a tolerance. You're transforming. Our objective here, guys, is to transform. We don't want to just be suffering the entire time. But if we're getting stronger, if like the fast that the three-day fast that we did before is easy, now let's try for a five-day fast. If a five-day fast was easy, let's try for a seven-day fast. Whatever God is compelling you to do at that very given time. But guys, the objective is not, you know, to be just like on a wheelchair by the end of this fast. Okay, the objective is to get better. All right. So we're moving on. So we covered that. Covered that. Covered that. Also, live your life. Um, I was also asked this question by Megan. She, you know, you know, she's like, um, my birthday's coming up, and you know, there's this thing that my friend invited me to. You know, showers are going on. You know, this 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 point in time, God is just blessing us where we have like a whole bunch of babies being born um, through marriage, through marriage, and um, and we have a bunch of wedding showers that are going on and stuff. So. A lot of stuff is going to be going on. Live your life. You can go to these things. If you know that these things are going to be a downfall, I'm not saying to go to the club or anything like that. If you know that you have a problem with parties, if you think that you're going to turn up and everything, stay away from them. But if you know that you have a little bit more endurance and everything like that, it doesn't mean that you can't go to the event. It just means that you need to show holiness when you go to that event. So when you go to that event, just because you go does not mean you should be twerking on the dance floor. You should be... People should see in the midst of that, if that's what you used to do before, people should see, like, yo, you're a little different now than you were before. Like, what's wrong? Like, what's different about you? Like, you just seem, you just seem peculiar. You seem set apart. You seem holy. You seem sanctified. These are the things that you want to take into, take into account. And plus, what's the point of doing a fast if you can't te test it? This is, this is my per my perspective. What's the point? What's the point of saying no? I'm gonna f I'm gonna fight and I'm gonna pray and I'm gonna this this that and the third. If you're not expecting a transformation, yo, it should be it should not be this hard for me to hold a drink. If I'm praying against addiction and all that different stuff, I'm praying so that God can deliver me from these things. I'm praying so that I can be different and that I don't have the same kinds of desires. When you're when you're fasting, your desires start to change. You want less of food, you want less of distraction, and you want more of God just because you get this. God is so good, guys. When you guys feel God, it's like you start to get addicted. You get addicted to him, and your addictions for other things kind of, sub your, your addiction, addictions to other things subside. Want more of God, need less of the world. So just keep that in mind. Guys, live your life. You know, because life happens. We, we live we live in the world, okay? We're not of the world, but we live in the world. Um, so, yeah. Next thing, I'm almost done. I'm going to wrap up really, really soon. Um, talk to your leaders. I'm so glad. I'm so glad for the privilege and the honor that it is always to hear from you guys and to, to, to be able to receive all of the questions that you guys have. I don't know everything, nor do all of your leaders know everything. But, you know, we do have some experience. You know, we low-key be brand. We low-key be opening up the Bible, you know. Um, God qualifies you to do a thing. It's not that we're qualified in ourselves. We just really love God. That's, that's, that's it. Uh, yeah, we just really love God. So um, if we don't know, we'll pray on it. We'll find out. We'll make a way. Um, we'll pray for you. We'll pray, we'll pray with you. But let us know. Do not drown out because you don't know something. It's, it's the most wonderful opportunity for you to ask questions because that's when God is like, you can hear God really, really clearly. And that's when everybody's in one accord. We know that you're fasting and everything like that. And we wanna make sure that you guys have the best possible experience and outcome. So make sure that you're talking to your leaders. Hit up Minister Andy, hit up Minister Greg, hit up Minister Vladimir, hit up myself. Um, 
any one of us, and I'm sure I'm positive, we love what we do. And, uh, you know, ask your other leaders, Sister Valerie, Sister Gaella, you know, just, just ask somebody, okay? Anybody who you know is a leader um, is here to help you and to service you, okay? Um, talk, talk to your peers. Yo, the whole youth is on the fast. If you're trying to do this thing by yourself, I mean, you guys should be encouraging one another. We should all be encouraging one another. It's not like, you know, we're all doing this separately. This is the cohesive thing because we want a cohesive answer. We want to work together as youth and as a church to be able to help the community, be able to change the world. We can't do that by ourselves. We're, we're stronger in numbers. So talk to the person next to you. What is your struggle? Are you struggling with this? You might have an answer to something that they don't have an answer to. They might have an answer to something that you don't have the answer to. Exchange information, guys. Talk to one another. Pray with one another. Read with one another. Seek God with one another. That's the objective. We weren't meant to do this thing on uh, alone. If that were the case, there would not be the 12 disciples. Okay? So, the next thing is, yo, hop on the prayer line. It's free. It's, it's free. Hop on the prayer line, guys. If you guys don't have the information, the number for the prayer line is 712-432-1500. Again, the number is 712-432-1500. 1500. When you hop on, um, it's going to ask you for uh, an access code. The access code is going to be 108-7243, and then you're going to press pound right after it. So again, the number is 108-7243, and then press pound. And then it'll just log you right on, and then you can just jump into the prayer with us. All right? Um, that's about it that I have for you guys right now. I love you guys to pieces. I want to make sure that you guys succeed. We all want to see you guys succeed. Um, it was just, you know, brought to my attention by Megan. Shout out to you, girl. Thank you so much for just um, making yourself available um, and just being willing to talk to somebody and to get answers. That's what we need to do in Christ. It's not about figuring it out on your own. But when they literally say give it to God, you got to give it to God. Um, if you guys need more information about fasting, again, hit up your leaders, hit up myself, you know, leave comments below for everybody else. Cause you might have questions that everybody else has, but they're too scared to ask. So have a little bit of courage and ask the questions. Okay. If you guys are looking biblically for a bl biblical outline of the way that you guys should be fasting, that we all should be fasting. You want to start off with Isaiah chapter 58, the entire chapter. If you guys have questions on Isaiah 58, Hit us up. I love you guys. Have an awesome experience. Have an awesome day. I pray that all of your needs be met. I pray that you guys grow in relationship with God and that we just go higher. I'm out.